we've boiled our bases. We've now allowed those bases to dry. These bases have sat out now overnight. And miraculously, they're dry. They're ready to be tweaked. They're ready to be used. But before we get started, I want to show you the surface of an untweaked base. What you're looking at right now is a microscopic look of the underside of a Tudor Frosty Total Team Control Base. It has not been boiled. It has not been tweaked. And we're going to take this base you're looking at right now, and we're going to compare it to some of these boil bases that we have here today. And we're going to do some other things as well. But primarily, those that's the main thing we're going to do. We're going to compare these boil bases against this unboiled base here. Okay, let's see how sharp you are. By looking at these two bases, can you guess which one is the boil base? I'll give you a moment. It's the base on the right. That's the boil base. And one of the ways you can tell if a base has been boiled, if you hold the base, it twists very easily, as you can see. It's very flexible. Also, if you drag your finger across the front of the base like so, or across any broad surface, like the top of the base, I don't want to rub off the ink, your finger will drag a little bit. There'll be a tacky feel. You see? Now, if you grab the unboiled base, it doesn't it, it move it twists a little bit but it it requires a little bit of force along with that if i slide my finger across the face of this base it's rather smooth see across the top of the base same thing along with that if you look a little closer at the the boil base if you if you look a little closer at the surface of the boil base the camera doesn't quite pick it up, but if you saw a boil base live, the surface, the, the, the shell of the base, especially with these frosties, it's got a clouded, a cloudy kind of look in the plastic from the absorption of uh, oils and waters during the boiling process. What you're looking at now is the underside of a boiled Tudor Frosty base. This is one of the bases that were boiled just a day ago. So we're going to go over to the game table and I grabbed another one of the boiled bases and I labeled that base 614. That's uh, June 2014. And we're going to mount our Pittsburgh Steeler figure on it, Marquise Pouncey, number 53. And we're going to match him up against this figure, which is mounted on an untweaked Tudor Frosty base. And that base has not been boiled. This base right here has not been boiled. It has not been tweaked. The Marquis Pouncey base has been boiled, but it has not been tweaked. We're going to match these bases up to see what kind of performance we get. Let's go. So off the top, the Marquis Pouncey figure pushes the untweaked, unboiled base off the line of scrimmage. So we can only imagine what could happen if we apply our pliers to this base and match it up against this base again. So let's run some other tests and let's see what we get. This base was the base that we tested earlier. This is the unboiled, untweaked base that we matched up against the Marquis Pouncey uh, newly boiled base. I'm going to move that base over here. Now, the base that we have on our test blocker here is an older boiled base that was boiled years ago. And this base used to be on this Marquis Pouncey figure. 
So basically, we're going to test a newly boiled base against an older boiled base, which, by the way, has been tweaked. This older boiled base has been tweaked already. So let's see what kind of results we get. Looks like the Marquise Pouncey figure won the battle for the line of scrimmage. Still more tests to run, and we still haven't tweaked the Marquise, this new Marquise Pouncey base yet. We haven't applied our pliers to the prongs of this base. So there's a lot of growth for this base, a lot of room to grow. We already know that this lineman can't match up against the Marquis Pouncey figure. So we're going to set him over here on the bench right now. So I went and got my Seattle Seahawks center, Max Unger. And we're going to match him up against this newly boiled base that hasn't been tweaked yet. And this is going to be the base that's going to be the measuring stick of what this boiled base is, can or cannot do. Let's see what happens. Okay, it looks like the Max Unger figure lost the line of scrimmage. Lost the battle for the line of scrimmage. But not bad. Let me uh take a look at his prongs. I like to do this every now and then. Sweep those prongs back some. And let's get another test here. Okay, Max Unger lost the battle for the line of scrimmage. Now, remember this base in our previous video. Uh, this is an unboiled, tweaked Tudor Total Team Control base. It's not a Frosty. This type of base, I would not attempt to boil. And I'll show you why in a moment. So, okay. Max Unger lost to the Marquis Pouncey figure, but not much. And I still haven't applied my pliers to this base yet. And what I was talking about earlier about not attempting to boil the base that you see on Max Unger. Let's move back a little bit, okay? Here's why. This base I found on eBay. I had bought a, a bunch of bases from somebody and they had this in the box. And it appears that whoever boiled this base tried to use these dark green bases as a boil, in a boil. And this base didn't absorb any water or oil at all. All it did was just shrivel up and melt. See? I have another also. Take a look at this base. In a boil, this base started to shed. Layers of the plastic started to come away from the frame of the base. Rather jagged, isn't it? See? This type of base, these bases here, they don't boil very well. I'll put that Max Unger base in there as well. See? This kind of base doesn't boil very well because the plastic during the manufacturing process wasn't manufactured like the frosty base. You can look at the look at the color green. See? This these frosty bases, like I said, they have a a cloudy kind of look. Well before you boil them, they look they look like the, they look as if they can glow in the dark. And if you compare that to these dark green bases. You can see the difference. So if you have these dark green polo polo green bases, I wouldn't recommend trying to boil them. Now there's some coaches out there who would say, yeah, they can boil anything. They'll try it. They'll do it. But I would, I personally wouldn't try to boil these kinds of bases here. Now that we have an idea what this new boiled base can do without without it being tweaked let's move on and see if we can get some vitals i have here my scale 
And I have my uh, newly boiled base and the unboiled base. So we're going to weigh it, the unboiled base, and see what we get. We have uh, 1.2 grams. Okay. I'm going to pull that base. And now we're going to put the boiled base on, on the scale. We have 1.3 grams. So from the boiling, this particular base has gained a tenth of a gram. Well, just let me go over here and grab a random boil, another random boil base here. Let's weigh this one, see what this one looks like. 1.3. Okay. Let me grab another. I'm not satisfied. Let's see what we got. 1.3 also. Okay. So we're looking at a tenth of a gram of an uh, increase in weight. Which isn't much. Along with weight gain, sometimes bases they will swell after being after being boiled. So as I measure this total team control base, and by the way, this is the base, this is the unboiled base. I measure its width at the dial, and I have a measurement of 18. 0.95 millimeters. Okay. All right. So now let me get the boil base. And let's measure its width. We're going to zero it out. I'm going to measure the width at the dial. And we have 19 millimeters 19.09 millimeters so there was a little bit of swelling there from 18.95 to 19 millimeters so we're looking at pretty much a millimeter uh, not a millimeter, but a little over. Not much in, in width. Not much of a, a, a growth. Okay. Let's measure length. See what we got. Looking at 27.5. Twenty seven millimeters in length. That's for the unboiled base. Now the boiled base, we have twenty seven. Make sure we got it all the way in there, okay. Twenty seven point fifty seven millimeters in length. So it's not much difference. There has there has been some some swelling after these after the base has been boiled. But if you put these bases side by side you don't see much difference. So if we came to a situation where it was it could be fourth in inches or first down Let's just say the 35 is the is first down. The swelling of the base is not going to have an effect on that measurement in regards to field position. Let's take some other measurements. We measured the length of the base and the width of the base. Let's measure the prongs. Okay, I want to get my uh, caliper here, and I'm going to grab this front prong. It reads 0.44 millimeters at the front. Let's grab the back prong real quick. 
the back prong reads 0.62 millimeters. This is the unboiled base. All right. Let's zero things out. Now we're going to grab our boiled base. Labeled 614. It's kind of rubbing off a bit. Okay. Let's see what we got. The front. That's 0.45. Let's shoot again and zero it out. This front prong is 0.44. Okay, not much difference. Let's go to the back prong. Zero it out. The back prong on this base is 0.61. Let me go and look at these prongs again on this, un on this unboiled base. Make sure we got an accurate reading. Point forty four on the front prong zeroed out and point do it again here and we're looking at about point sixty point six one on the rear prong so it's not much difference in the um, thickness of the prongs we're now ready to tweak our newly boiled base. And this base was mounted on the uh, Marquis Pouncey Pittsburgh Steeler figure. So now, remember, we boiled this base. So that means these prongs are very soft now from the boiling process. So when we use our pliers, we don't want to bear down with all our might because we don't want to smash out these prongs. We don't want to render this base useless. So we simply just want to go just a little bit and gently press. Okay. And we inspect our prong to see what we have. And it's looking kind of flat. Okay. So I'm going to go to the other prong. I'm going to do the same thing. This is the most fundamental thing you can do in tweaking taking your pliers and flattening the prong of a base that's the most fundamental thing you're going to do that's the first thing you're going to do pretty much okay so now I pressed on my prongs a little bit let me see if I can get a closer look without blurring this out okay I'm going to sweep these prongs back Touch it one more time. No need to squeeze really hard because now we have these prongs very soft. You got to treat these prongs now with kid gloves. Imagine if you were handling a scoop of jello. You wouldn't just squeeze on it because it will smash all through your hands, right? So that's, think of it like that when you're dealing with these, uh, these prongs on these boiled bases. So now let's go ahead and put... Marquis Pouncy up against Max Unger. And let's see what type of uh, battle we get. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you see how fast Max Unger left the line of scrimmage? Let's set it back again one more time. Look at that. Okay, let me adjust make some adjustments here we're going to sweep these prongs back again to make sure we're good now this is a tweaked unboiled base on, on the Max Unger figure let's run it again it's not making a difference we smashed the back prongs now with these front prongs on these boiled bases you want to be careful because if you flatten those front prongs, it could cause the figure to collapse under the weight. See? And you could get the figure might bounce like so as it goes up the board. See, those front prongs are more sensitive than the rear. 
because that's where the weight of the figure is, you see. So I wouldn't recommend using your pliers to press on these front prongs because you don't want to weaken the base. You don't want to render this base useless. So right now as it's looking, this boil base, we this is a random base that we pulled out of that boil batch. And what it's done so far is dominate. It's dominated. I don't know. <laughs> it's not a good look. I mean, as it stands right now, this base is pretty much is going to is going to dominate any lineman I put in front of it. There's still more tests that I want to run with this uh, Marquise Pouncy figure and ball base. I have here one of my blocking sleds, and this blocking sled weighs in at 8.1 grams. The Marquis Pouncy figure mounted on the boil base weighs in at 3.0 grams. That's 5 grams more than what this figure weighs. So I'm going to match up Marquis Pouncy figure versus this block and sled. Let's see what we get. The figure held its ground against an 8 gram sled. And by the way, this sled is no slouch. This sled is competitive. It moves. The sled moves. So, if this ball, if this 3.0, if this 3 gram figure in base is matching up against this 8 gram blocking sled, as you can see here. That's a lot of promise there, a lot, a lot of promise. To all of my viewers who are not in the hobby of electric football, you may be asking the question, you know, what's the issue with ball bases? Uh, why is it different from just using a regular base straight from the pack? Um, there really isn't much difference. It's just that throughout the hobby, you have different coaches out there who boil their bases differently than what you've seen in the uh, base boiling video. Um, there are guys out there who soak their bases in uh, chemicals like turpentine, paint thinner, what have you. Those chemicals melt the plastic but they have a technique where they can melt the plastic just enough to make it soft enough to make it work. Um, with that combined with boiling, it makes it easy for coaches to cheat, if you will, in a game. So for a long time, and to this day, base boiling is frowned upon in the hobby of electric football. Now what what a person does in the privacy of their own home or their own company, what have you, is what they do. But when they go to a tournament, you know, in tournament play, any chemically altered base is banned. So for a long time, I have been uh, toiling with the idea of whether I should do this video or not on base boiling. So after this last argument or last discussion that we had concerning the boiling of our bases, I finally came full circle. I said, well, I'm going to go ahead and do this video, lay it down, and let the chips fall where they may. So with that, I leave it up to the uh, members within the electric football community to determine whether or not they want to continue to ban uh, base boiling or whether they want to open the door for base boiling to be allowed within tournaments. I'm Mo. Thanks for watching.